Sitting along the Hudson River in New York is an iconic estate, but it hasn't always looked this way. Hi everyone, Ken here. Welcome to This House. Today we are exploring the architectural transformation of the Knoll into what we now know as Lyndhurst. Make sure to hit that subscribe button so you never miss an exciting episode of This House. In 1838, William Paulding, the mayor of New York City, commissioned Alexander Jackson Davis to design his dream house. The home would become an amalgamation of architectural styles, which William would call the Knoll. The asymmetric house quickly drew critique from the public who would snub William's estate by referring to it as Paulding's Folly. Even though it drew sharp criticism, it was still an attractive home with turrets clad in limestone. William would not spend much time at this home, but his son would live here until the 1850s. The home would become intriguing to merchant George Merritt. He imagined a stately home lined with linden trees and would go on to rename the property Lindenhurst. He drained the wetlands surrounding the home and had Ferdinand Mangold landscape the property in a style fashionable for the 19th century. He hired Alexander Jackson Davis, the home's original architect, to return to the site to rework the home and expand upon it. The house was doubled in size, with major renovations to both the interior and exterior. A four-story tower was added to the new north wing, which rose high above the estate. The original porte cochere would be retrofitted to become a vestibule, with a more elaborate porte cochere being built to grace the new entrance. The facade was unified with a mostly Gothic Revival influence. Among the other rooms added in the renovations were servants' quarters, bedrooms, and a large dining room. Careful attention was paid to the scale of the rooms to give it a cozier feeling than its neighboring estates along the Hudson River. The windows in the home were considerably small for a house of this size. The hallways were long and narrow, like the halls found in a middle-class house of the time. Ceilings in the main rooms were heavily ornamented and included vaults, barrel vaults, and sharp peaks which seemed to stretch the space upward. George enjoyed the estate for the rest of his life until his passing in 1873. It was then sold by his daughter Julia in 1880 to Jay Gold, a railroad tycoon who had amassed a fortune. He had grown up in the Catskill Mountains and had a strong desire to return to nature after making it big in the city. Jay shortened the name of the estate to Lindhurst and used it as a vacation property for him and his family to return to nature. The Golds were enamored with the home and made no major changes to it. They purchased new furniture and artwork to preserve George Merritt's vision for the house. Both Jay and his wife Helen lived out the rest of their lives in this house, with Helen passing in 1889 and Jay following a few years later in 1892. Lindhurst was then bequeathed to Gold's daughter, Helen. She was well-educated, having earned a law degree from NYS. She became most known for her philanthropy work. She offered free classes for various trade services to disadvantaged children in the hopes that by learning new skills, they would break out of poverty and live decent lives. She would only keep the estate for herself one day per week, having it open six days per week for the public to use the pool building and greenhouse. She would go on to marry, have children, and foster a child before her death in 1938. Lindhurst then transferred to Helen's sister Anna, who had married into French aristocracy. The Duchess would honor her sister's wishes to keep it open for charitable organizations. During the war, she auctioned off many of the family's collections and furnishings to directly benefit the American Red Cross. At the end of World War II, Anna returned to France where she would live out the rest of her life. In 1961, she willed Lyndhurst to the National Trust for Historic Preservation, and by 1965, the estate was open to the public as both a National Historic Site and a museum. Today, visitors come from all around the world to experience this one-of-a-kind park. Thank you all for watching. I really hope that you enjoyed hearing about a mansion that has been lovingly preserved after we've seen so many that have been lost to time. Make sure to hit that subscribe button and grab a This House t-shirt from our merch shop. I'd also like to take a moment to say thank you to our This House supporters whose names you can see on screen right now. If you would like to see your name on the screen, please consider joining our membership program today. I'll see you next time on This House.